and welcome to episode 19 of Let's Hear It. A much different event today. I'm here with my pal Kenny Roby, live in Woodstock, New York. Kenny has a great new record out called The Reservoir, and it was made about two miles from here, right up the street at Applehead Recording Studios. Kenny liked it so much up here that after he recorded the record, he moved from North Carolina to Woodstock and now lives here. And there is a incredible reservoir here called the Shokin Reservoir. And I guess that was a little bit of the inspiration for the title of the album, or mm -hmm. a lot of the inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, it's a reservoir that the water in that reservoir is the New York City drinking water. So it goes through about 120 miles of underground pipes and gets to New York City. And it's a beautiful reservoir. We'll post a few pictures for you to see. And uh, we just figured uh, the weather's going to be getting cold here soon, so let's make a unique episode of Let's Hear It. Uh, Kenny's got a couple guitars here today. I've got a banjo. I'm not going to do much with the banjo, but uh, Kenny's got a 1989 Gibson J45, which looks much older than 30 years, I have to say. Well, it's because it's 31 years old, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct. S sorry, hillbilly humor. <laughs> yeah, what has happened to the back of the neck here? I mean, this is the kind of uh, kind of crazing that you see on much older guitars. And uh, I know you've got a few stories about this guitar, and some of it relates to our pal Neil Casal. Um, that guitar back there is a 1958 Martin D21. That was Neil's guitar. Uh, Kenny is now using that guitar to write some songs on. But that, so that's a Neil Cassell story about that guitar, but this also has a Neil Cassell story, and what is that? Yeah, well, there's actually th sort of three Neil Cassell stories with this guitar. Um, uh, Six Ring Drag, my old band, was on tour with Whiskey Town, Ryan Adams' band, back in, I think it was 97 or 98. And I was riding on the bus with Whiskey Town from Texas to uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico, and um, I didn't put a humidifier in it when we stored it in the bus um, in the bin. And, uh, and I got to Santa Fe and I opened it up and there was a big crack in the back right here, which is probably three inches long or so. Um, so that's sort of a Neil story because this association playing with the Cardinals. And then the next Neil story was the next year, and maybe later in 98, we were playing at the Mercury Lounge in New York and and Neil was there, and uh, I think we were playing with Sean Lennon and Josh Rouse and a couple other people. And uh, um, so Yoko was there for the cracking of this guitar. Ah. Um, <laughs> um, so uh, we uh, we were loading stuff off stage after we played, and Neil was helping us grab some equipment and put it down onto the um, the floor. And somebody's foot got caught in the uh, cable that was plugged into this, and it sort of jerk the guitar off the guitar stand it was sitting on near the edge of the stand mm. and, I mean near, near the edge of the stage and uh, the guitar fell almost off the stage and Neil grabbed it but when he grabbed it uh, it swung and it hit the edge of the monitor on the edge of the stage mm. and it's got like a four inch crack right here in the top so that's the other Neil story and the other one we like to say is is Neil's fault um, <laughs> or that he had something to do with it. Um, we, uh, I was playing with the, the guys who played on the reservoir, uh, opening up for Circles Around the Sun just before the pandemic this year um, uh, at Brooklyn Bowl. And I guess the guitar fell over somewhere backstage in the case. And um, I guess Neil felt that it, it needed some reinforcement in the neck. So um, we'd like to say that he had something to do with it breaking but I opened it up the next day to do the video for old love with the guys in the city and I was like holy shit what is going on with my neck and the neck had broken off if you look at my Instagram back then you'll see the pictures the neck had like almost broken off it was like at this angle so uh, we sent it to uh, John Shannon's guy Lou in Brooklyn and I just got it back a little while ago but uh, as a lot of people say it's probably stronger than it ever was so um Damn, Neil, appreciate it, I think. So Neil's career as a roadie was not was not uh, historic. His one experience as a roadie was... Uh, well, it was break, historic. Break. wasn't necessarily <laughs> on the right side of history, but I don't know. 
But like I said, maybe it needed to be fixed anyway. There's a lot of wear in the neck. It's I think amazing because how much wear there is. You know, I think part maybe it's a lack of care. I don't know. Um, but uh, I think also it's because I don't have a lot of guitars, and so this was my guitar for years playing on the road. I didn't yeah. usually have a backup acoustic, and I just played this one, so it's traveled all around, and I've it played great. it a lot. So yeah, it's got you know some nice. Um, pick wear here and some I don't even know what this is from it's like a smash. strange smash, smash and something. some weird uh, um, well, checking kind of, in it uh, but yeah seeing that a custom shop would do to make yeah a guitar look old. Gibson was actually gonna hire me but then they started having issues okay. financial issues <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, so you're gonna play a song from your new album the reservoir and, sure uh, and then maybe before we get out of here, I'll uh, accompany you on some banjo. Sounds good. Um, so let's hear what you got. What is the song you're going to play? Um, I don't know. What song should I play, Gary? <laughs> How about Clown, since I played this on the... Yeah. We'll try it with a pick. sounded great. Um, I really do recommend you get Kenny's record, The Reservoir. Um, 
and uh, drink a toast to our friend Neil Casal. And we'll play you out. Well, this is, a, I forgot to mention this. This is my, if you've seen my Instagram series before we started Let's Hear It, I uh, have 70 instruments packed into my apartment in New York City. And this is one of them. This is my favorite banjo. This is a banjo that I learned how to play banjo on. It's a 2012 Pisga banjo made by a guy named Patrick Hevener in Western North Carolina. He's, I think he's made about 1,500 banjos so far. Wow. And he's only like 32, 33 years old. He has a solar powered banjo shop. And this is a 12 inch rim with a calf skin head and a beautiful persimmon wood, which is native to the Appalachian Mountains out that way. And uh, there's also persimmon wood here on the fretboard. And I think this might be some walnut on the back or maybe maple. Uh, but it's a great sounding banjo, and uh, I treasure it. So there you go. So he brought it up the Appalachian to Woodstock, just like me. Yeah, exactly. That's true. Yeah. Come back. <laughs> Shirts in the flame on the torch, standing there swaying and almost got scorched, swooning there under the moon. I thought it was the rain that was licking my neck. Sharp silver turn couldn't keep her in check. How does a vampire self reflect a thousand years looking for you? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Oh, oh, oh. What you gonna do? Got nothing to lose. I gave it all away there late last night. Heart filled with ice and chest got tight. Skin was a sizzling when I woke up in the light. One the damn thing I could do. I saw the truth in your lipstick case Love was a splattered all over the place I could live forever just looking at your face Like all the other blood bags do What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? When a man's got nothing to lose